shot uh, an unknown number of times. She was taken to the area hospital. She is in serious condition at this time. It's unclear what the mother was. But it's, it's not really a home game. It's, it's just another trip you have to make. If we presume that's going to happen, it's going to happen. And it takes the sting out of, oh man, the plastic surgery must hurt. It must be dangerous. I saw everything they did to me, and it was just, it was a lot of fun. This is THB 11 This Morning. Good morning, along with Laura Monteverdi. I'm meteorologist Tom Brandon. Elise Seedy is off today. Thank mm -hmm. you for joining us here. It's about 5 o'clock in the morning on this Thursday. Yeah, if you go to work like us around 3.30, 3.45 in the morning, maybe some stray drops on your windshield. I had a few this morning <laughs> on my windshield. So did I. I looked up and said, what's going on? I was like, come on, keep, keep, don't stop. <laughs> come on, need the rain, need the rain. We do need the now, rain. Well, it looks as if we will have a good chance of rain and thunder for the next uh, couple of three days this mm -hmm. weekend, today. And, and then it gets really hot next week. and it, it looks like it's going to be pretty well advertised that a big ridge of high pressures. You remember that show under the dome? Just going to come in. We're going to have a dome right of high pressure mm -hmm. right over the top of us, and that's going to bake us next week. Perfect so, time to go on vacation elsewhere. Yeah, you go right <laughs> ahead and do that, Miss Monteverdi. You okay, right I will. Periods of rainy thunderstorms today will give way to a more weekend scattered activity. We'll keep that in the forecast through probably about Sunday. Now this morning on Live View Max, there's an area to the north and to the west southwest. Both areas have shown some signs of uh, decreasing intensity wise. But up north, Fulton, Baxter, Marion, Boone counties uh, getting some of this activity from near Mountain Home, close to Cherokee Village, Salem, over to Harrison. And that movement is to the south. The other activity we have has fallen apart in west central Arkansas from, uh, let's say, Scott and Polk counties where we find Waldron and Mina. That activity moving to the east southeast. And there are those stray showers Laura mentioned that move through Lone Oak, Pulaski, and the Saline counties. I think more of that is expected for the day today. We have a risk of severe weather today. It's slight. Our rain chances are 50 percent. We'll talk about that in your forecast highs coming up in a few moments. But an update on the morning headlines from Laura Monteverdi. Thank you, Tom. A woman is in critical condition this morning after being shot while on the job. And now Little Rock police are looking for the three men responsible. And it happened last night at the Sonic on Chanel Parkway in West Little Rock. Police say the three suspects pulled up, shot the worker and then left in a silver 2005 Cadillac Seville. The woman was taken to the hospital in critical condition. According to Lieutenant Steve McClanahan, a group of people saw what happened and were interviewed by police. The motive is still unknown. In a THV 11 update, a Pine Bluff couple suspected of stealing from a neighbor behind bars this morning. Caitlin Cato and her boyfriend Matthew Mulligan both charged with theft. According to a police report, Cato was dog sitting at a home on Wellington Drive. The homeowner tells police Mulligan may have taken jewelry, a cell phone, gold coins and a credit card. Two former U.S. presidents and a former British prime minister are in town today for a special occasion, a graduation. Presidents Bill Clinton and George W. Bush joined former prime minister Tony Blair for the ceremony, honoring the 2016 class of the Presidential Leadership Scholars Program. The program also includes a conversation with members of the Little Rock Nine. It's not open to the public, but we will have more from the event tonight on THV 11. Governor Asa Hutchinson setting a January deadline for executions now that the state has a new supply of lethal injection drugs. The governor says he plans to schedule the executions once a state Supreme Court ruling upholding the state's secrecy law goes into effect. Eight death row inmates filed a lawsuit claiming a law that kept the source of the drug secret was unconstitutional. The ruling won't take effect, though, unless justices deny the inmates request for a rehearing. The Department of Correction reported getting a supply of the drug earlier this week. The state's previous supply expired last month. The Department of Health is being asked to basically certify a, a product for which we don't really have um, good data on its effectiveness or its safety for the public. The state health department taking a strong stance against medical marijuana in the natural state. One medical marijuana proposal has been approved for the November ballot so far. The campaign director for Arkansans for Compassionate Care says they'll continue to push ahead to the election. They're not going to make the law 
and Asa Hutchinson's not going to make the law. The people in Arkansas are going to make that decision. Both that group and another waiting to get on the ballot say the Arkansas Department of Health would do a good job regulating medical marijuana. If this proposal passes, ADH would have no choice but to do what the legislation says. One thing I would always say to my dad when he walked out the door was, Goodbye, Daddy. I love you. Be safe. And tonight we say our final, Goodbye, Daddy. We love you. Be safe. Dallas Transit Officer Brent Thompson, along with Officers Lauren Ahrens and Michael Smith, remembered by thousands at memorial services yesterday. Officer Michael Kroll will be laid to rest tomorrow, and Officer Patrick Zamripa on Saturday. All five were killed last week in an attack at a protest. All police on bad. They all on bad. I feel all police shouldn't be punished for other police's crimes. That is the son of Elton Sterling, the man killed by Baton Rouge police officers last week, calling for peace. Today, he'll meet with President Obama at a town hall in Washington, D.C. Sterling's funeral is tomorrow. Pine Bluff police working to create a positive relationship with the community through youth camps. Volunteers say it's a great way for kids and their parents to bond with officers, especially with the recent conflict between cops and the community. Lieutenant Thompson has volunteered at the camp for six years, and he says the kids get to know and trust officers. Some of the kids at the camp say they now call these officers their friends. They're nice people. I can talk to them way better now. They actually want to help us to grow as people and as a person. Campers will graduate today at the Pine Bluff Convention Center. The uh, ceremony is open to the public. It begins at 6 o'clock tonight. The RNC Rules Committee expected to vote in Cleveland today on whether or not to allow delegates to vote their conscience at next week's convention instead of Donald Trump. Trump says he's narrowed down his VP candidate picks to two, which he plans to announce tomorrow. Former House Speaker Newt Gring Gringrich says it might be between him and Indiana Governor Mike Pence. A new Quinnipiac poll finds Trump gaining ground on Hillary Clinton in several key swing states including Florida and Pennsylvania. Clinton is reportedly considering Virginia Senator Tim Kaine as her VP. She says she'll campaign with him there today. Everybody loves it down there. They, they love the game being down there. And, um, but it's, it's not really a home game. It's, it's just another trip you have to make. That comment from senior linebacker Brooks Ellis at SEC Media Day making fans wonder if the Hogs will continue to call Little Rock their second home. Yeah, U of A's contract to play at War Memorial Stadium runs through 2018, but they've changed it before, and some fans think they will again. Arkansas games create about $4 million for the city's economy, but with all the work UA has done on its own stadium, including recently approved renovations, the school loses money each time it place here in Little Rock. Attendance at games here has also dropped. War Memorial Stadium Commission Chairman Kevin Crass says tailgating and technology hurt the game. The downside is we'll have 15,000 people stay on the golf course and watch it on satellite television and not come into the stadium. We ask you what you think about the Hogs possibly leaving Little Rock. Shane said not everyone can make it to the games in Fayetteville and that there are great fans in Little Rock. And uh, Becca agrees that she wants them to keep playing at War Memorial. But Joshua says there's a three-hour drive. It's in a bus, and it's just not worth it. You know, this, this is a continuous debate, and people mm -hmm. will, you know, I, I grew up going to War Memorial watching the Hogs play. And Would you, you know, be disappointed? Uh, I, mean, I would be disappointed, but, yeah. but I would certainly expect that they would go back to Fayetteville and, yeah. and not come down. I mean, they, it's all about money. They it sure, is all they're, about they're money. Make, they're going to make a lot more up there. And, and two, you know, well, if they would play a decent team in Little Rock, I think mm -hmm. we had, I think it would be drawing a bigger crowd to actually go in the stadium. But Georgia played here a couple of years ago. They were a top 10 ranked program and mm -hmm. we didn't fill it up. And if we don't fill it up, what's the incentive for them to money, keep money, money? Down? I understand both ways. I'm not saying that I think they should play. <laughs> I understand it, it's a monetary thing. That's true. Well, she's everyone's favorite friend. But Jennifer Aniston, she's not so friendly with the tabloids recently. Yeah, it's all about this. Coming up in your entertainment headlines, we're going to tell you more about how the actress has taken on the, the media. But first, do you ever get mad behind the wheel? Sometimes. <laughs>
Oh, she is not alone. You might want to look out for angry drivers on your morning drive, especially after hear the results from a new road rage survey. Tom, did you take this? I did. I, I failed it. Yeah, I did yeah. too. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have the statistics ahead. All right, so if you're going to be out on the road, especially over northern Arkansas this morning, you will have to dodge some thunderstorms. More rain in the forecast. We'll kind of give you specifics as to when it will occur and when we can get hot again. That's coming up. Now, weather from the Crane Kia Weather Garden. Well, uh, thank you very much uh, from the Crane Kia Weather Garden, where it is a very warm and muggy morning. We've had a few raindrops, but those drops look like they've now ended in central Arkansas. More organized convection up north and to the, oh, there was a raindrop. There's another raindrop. Maybe they're coming back. And more storms in uh, western Arkansas that are falling apart just a bit. Weather headlines shape up like this. Periods of thunderstorms today. We'll have a batch this morning up north and then some redevelopment this afternoon. A lot of that is due to daytime heating and some leftover outflow boundaries. Series of uh, low pressure waves affecting us over the next couple of three days. That's going to keep scattered chances of thunderstorms in our forecast. Then next week we'll crank up the heat just a bit. This is going to be a decent little heat wave, and I think temperatures are going to eclipse 100 degrees in several locations. But one of the things we've got to keep in mind here is you're better able to make it to 100 here in Arkansas if you haven't had a whole lot of rain over a span of time. That allows all of that moisture at soil level to just kind of evaporate. That's going to be the trick. If we get enough rainfall, it may keep temperatures in the middle to upper 90s next week. 68 Mountain Homes, 74 in Harrison. We do see storms here. There are also some storms in western Arkansas. Pine Bluff 77, Camden 77, and here they are. They're moving quickly to the south. Baxter, Fulton County, Boone, Marion Counties over near Harrison, close to Eureka Springs this morning. This activity looks like it may backbuild a little toward northwest Arkansas as it moves to the south. And you see the activity here in eastern Oklahoma moving into western Arkansas. Now for the morning drive, you will have to contend with a few morning stray showers. So complex here, complex here. Another one in Kansas that will begin to uh, get close to Arkansas later in the day today into tonight. And all of it around this frontal boundary that has moved into Oklahoma, Texas, and southwestern Missouri. This boundary is uh, pretty much going to push to the south and stall out here in uh, northern Arkansas. There's the risk of severe weather today for the counties that you see in yellow. That does not include Little Rock, but places like Searcy, Russellville, Fayetteville, and Harrison. You'll have that risk today for damaging wind. Let's put it into motion. There's that uh, area of thunderstorm skirting just to our east. The next batch looks like it's going to develop by early afternoon. Another disturbance. This is the one in Kansas moving to the southeast. So we will have plenty of opportunity the next few days for scattered storms. And then we look ahead next week. This is by Tuesday. This ridge of high pressure is going to extend all the way from North Dakota into Mexico. And what's going to happen with this ridge of high pressure? It's going to bake us. Temperatures will be in the upper 90s to near 100. So whatever coolish feel we have now through Saturday, enjoy it. It gets hot and stays hot next week, possibly through the end of the month, Laura Monteverdi. It's a good thing you're skipping town and going on vacation, right? Cool spot, I hope. <laughs> if you consider Florida a cool spot, yeah. then hey. More millennials are saying no when it comes to credit cards. According to a new survey by Bankrate.com, only one in about three millennials has a credit card. Instead, they're embracing new technology like Venmo. Other high-tech payment options include Google Wallet and Splitwise that helps users easily split their bills or rent with their friends. Even with these options, though, the survey shows millennials may become more interested in credit cards as they get older. I think if I had a credit card, I would consider myself a full adult in some weird way. The survey also found credit card use does increase with age. About 68% of people 65 and older own a credit card. Road rage can include rude gestures or swearing, but we've seen many incidents turn dangerous. A new AAA survey found nearly 80% of U.S. drivers reported engaging in angry and aggressive behaviors in the past year. 51% say they purposely tailgated, 47% yelled at another driver, and 45% say they honked at someone. AAA estimates nearly 6 million drivers have bumped or rammed another car on purpose, and 7 million got out of their car to confront another driver. Uh, I think we're definitely surprised at how often it's occurring. And to tell you the truth, you know, a lot of times we look at these numbers and people tend to underreport.
Male drivers and drivers between 19 and 39 were significantly more likely to act aggressively. And the most enraged drivers, well, the survey says they can be found in the Northeast. <laughs> AAA recommends being tolerant of other drivers and not responding with eye contact or uh, gestures. <laughs> that, that Northeast Arkansas, Jonesboro, Oh, Paragold no, area, they're talking New US. York, Boston. Oh, I Come tell on you what, now. It, it's bad. I mean, people get competitive, and, and, and a lot of it, uh, like when we leave the office here, we hit 630. I know of several occasions where you try to merge into traffic, and the they people, won't they won't over. let you do it. They speed up to, to no, nope, you're not going to. Get I yell in my car at them that they can't hear anything that's going on. They can only see what I do in my car. Oh, goodness. <laughs> All right, parents, we tend to uh, see tantrums from our kids or adults, <laughs> whether our human kids or pets. One dog's tantrum in a car is getting a lot of attention online this morning. <laughs> Check this out. What's he doing? This is Napoleon. He's a puppy at the Southern Indiana Animal Rescue. They posted this video on their Facebook page. Now, he got upset when he couldn't sit in his foster mom's lap. Oh, okay. Napoleon is believed to be a, a corgi mix. He oh, has a listen, medical listen. condition requiring him to eat watered-down food. So, unfortunately, <laughs> as many hearts he's captured adoption applications aren't being accepted for him. Aw, look at that little face. He's still getting plenty of love, though, from his foster mom and his fans. They viewed this video nearly two million times. How could you not pick him up and put him in your lap? Put you know in your lap? Does you know ride with you in the car in your lap? She does, but she sits in the she she buckles in actually. I have a seatbelt yeah. for. Yeah, I've, you know, got Bo the Yorkie. He likes to whatever we, we drive to see Dr. Bob. He likes uh, to get in the lap, and I just don't like that because it's, it's not very safe. It's, you know, come on, Bo, let's <laughs> move back over there. Okay. Unlike presidential candidates Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, someone isn't making us wait to reveal their running mate. This candidate, uh, her name's Barbie. <laughs> for the first time. President Barbie comes with a vice president doll, and it's also a woman. They're sold in pairs for about $25. And best of all, they're available in a variety of skin tones, faces, shapes, and hair colors. Mattel has run presidential candidate Barbie since 92, but this all-female ticket is a landmark for the campaign. Barbie Career's line of dolls includes Barbie as a doctor, pilot, teacher, athlete, artist, even a game developer. President and VP Barbie will be out in stores very soon. Hmm. What happened to Ken? Ken is out. Ken is Ken's long out? gone. Huh. Maybe this is, um, we're going to see this in our election. We don't know. You never know. We're off to a quick break. Still ahead, Officer Justin Dorsey with Benton Police has your current traffic conditions. Plus your Thursday forecast. We'll also take a peek ahead right after this. Time now, 523, getting ready to hit the road. You might have to deal with a few scattered stray showers here and there in central Arkansas, but Officer Dorsey as whether or not you need to be concerned with your construction zones or even accidents this morning. Uh, morning. Well, there are no accidents to report this morning, so traffic moving well. Uh, as far as that goes, we do have a lane closure on mm -hmm. I-30 across the river bridge until 6 o'clock on the westbound side. So just want everybody right. to, to be aware of that. But other than that, there's, there's no major problems um, anywhere coming into the metro this morning. Right. So. so be careful and use right. caution. Let's uh, check your operation safe speed locations today. Speed. Where is Officer Dorsey working? Where can you get an autograph? Maybe not the one you want. But. Yeah, yeah, probably not one of those. So in Bend today, we'll be on North Shore Drive, but Arkansas State Police will be on I-430 north of Shackelford, Little Rock on Charles Bussey Avenue, North Little Rock on North Hills Boulevard. So make sure you're aware of these locations. Slow down and wear your seatbelt today. You guys have an event coming up tonight at Benton. Tip a cop. I, I believe this is for Special Olympics. It is. You guys always get behind Special Olympics. So uh, when, where, why, what, and how? All those things. Right. So go. tonight, from 5 to close at Colton Steakhouse, um, that's on Landers Road in Benton there. Um, officers will be trading in the uniform for an apron and being wait staff um, all to raise money for Special Olympics. So uh, come on out. It Long should be, uh, yeah, for a good call, get some good food and be a good Sounds time. Good. Yeah. Uh, and Special Olympics Arkansas uh, are very supportive of the athletes where they try to do events like this to raise money so that the athletes won't have any expense out of their pocket to pay for the yeah, summer games. Absolutely, absolutely. It's awesome. a wonderful cause. Thank you, sir. Good all to have right. you here. Good Appreciate to be it. Be Thank careful you. out on the roads this all morning right. as we, uh, uh, whoa, what's wrong, Mr. Camera? Camera got bumped, looked kind of weird there for a moment. Cloudy, a few showers, can't be ruled out. When I say showers, a few sprinkles occurring in uh, the Little Rock area this morning. And those showers will continue off and on, becoming partly cloudy 
to mostly cloudy here at 7 o'clock and 81. I think I'll change the wording pretty much to mostly cloudy skies. I'm going to keep an eye on this area to the north. It's moving to the south pretty quickly. Notice that we've got storms occurring from Fulton, Sharp over to Baxter. Uh, even a stronger area of thunderstorms here close to the uh, Harrison area, Boone and uh, let's say Carroll counties. Elsewhere, storms have decayed quite a bit over the west, but they may redevelop. We're going to get the cloud shield that will help to keep temperatures in check a little today, but still this afternoon we're looking at lower to mid 90s. Mountain home, that area of rain and thunder has moved through your area. Marshall, Leslie, Mountain View, Melbourne, over to Cherokee Village, now beginning to see that area of thunderstorms. And in western parts of the state, you see they're more spotty and scattered in nature. They're falling apart, moving to the east southeast. Now, we have had a few light sprinkles develop in and around the weather garden outside. Uh, on the way to work this morning, I had a few sprinkles. And notice over in Perry, Yale County, Southern Pope County, we're looking at some developing showers. Maybe even a rumble of thunder can't be ruled out. Couple of complexes affecting Arkansas today. That's going to keep rain in our forecast. If you are working outside today, uh, just be aware of that. Maybe pouring concrete, not such a great idea for the day with those thunderstorm chances. And Little Rock will reach 91 at 3 o'clock. That chance of rain and thunder will be about 50%. Now, we start off with 70s and 80s this morning in and around Arkansas with 82 Little Rock Hot Springs, 83. The reason we have the 80s, temperatures being held up by the uh, substantial cloud cover. Across the metro area, Lone Oak 80, Cabot 81, 81 in Malvern. 79 up in Searcy. Looking ahead, we have rain chances continuing into the weekend. Then we'll see the rain chances turn off. We're going to turn the faucet off next week. Only a stray heating type shower, but look at those temperatures getting close to 100 Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, even hotter than that possibly toward the end of the week. That's a look at the weather. Laura, back over to you. Thanks, Tom. Jennifer Aniston is making headlines this morning. Hollywood is buzzing over her powerful message in the tabloids. You probably have heard about this. The actress wrote an essay for the Huffington Post saying she is not pregnant. She said she may become a mom one day, but not out of a need to complete herself. She also said she's fed up with, quote, sport-like scrutiny and body shaming that occurs daily. She even called out the paparazzi and the portrayal of women in the media in general. <laughs> Stars of the sports world were honored at last night's 2016 ESPY Awards. Fans were able to pick the winners. NBA Finals MVP LeBron James won Best Male Athlete, and he and his teammates were given Best Team Honors. Other highlights of the night included reporter Craig Sager receiving the Jimmy V Award for Perseverance. With our busy lives, it isn't always easy to cook every night, so many of us turn to eating out occasionally. But ahead this morning, we'll tell you five menu items you might want to avoid on your next outing. We want to be able to have um, people in the community see others like themselves who are, who are helping to make this community a better place. And with tensions high across the country, North Little Rock police looking to make some big changes to their force. More on their effort to create a more diverse force coming up.